What's up, everybody? A uh, long time no see for lots of you. So, <laughs> just getting home late at night, one in the morning, a couple weeks before um, Halloween, which is my favorite holiday um, next to Christmas. So, I was thinking I was going to share at least a couple ghost stories before Halloween with you guys, those of you that are into the paranormal, like me. Um, and I'm in my car, I just got done working, and um, <clears throat> my husband's asleep, he gets up at 5, so I stayed in the car to be quiet for him. Uh, so I don't wake him up and he's a skeptic. So he doesn't believe in this ghost stuff anyway. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope you guys are doing okay. I miss a lot of people. Um, I'll be playing this Thursday at Yellow Cab Tavern with a lot of really cool ladies. Amber Hargett is hosting a women's uh, songwriters night. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. I'm glad that she asked me to do it. Um, so anyway, that's music stuff. <clears throat> but the first story that I'll share with you guys, and it's kind of cool under the spooky car light. It's like perfect lighting for this. Um, the first story is not one of mine. It's actually one of my mom's. Um, and this is a story that I grew up hearing my entire life. Um, and what makes it super cool is beside the fact that it's really, really fucking scary. <laughs> um, there's a witness and another person involved that is a skeptic. So to me, that's what made it even more interesting. Uh, cause it wasn't just my mom that experienced it. So the first story took place, uh, when I was about one year old. So I don't remember anything about it. Um, don't even remember the house that we lived in at the time, but my mom said it was in Plain City on Amity Road. That's all I know. And it had a creek in the backyard. I remember there's a photo. I do remember of the backyard with the creek that ran through it. Uh, so my mom, said that they didn't live there very long I think only like a year because of what happened um but she said at first it was little things like um I guess there was a picture over my crib that she constantly had to adjust it was always being moved you know crooked um and I guess that I would say there was someone at my bed like I would point and like say someone was there. I don't remember any of that. Um, and just so you guys know, like my mom is not like, she's really religious. <laughs> so ghost is like going against her beliefs. You know, this is not someone that is like, Oh, I see a ghost all the time. Um, so this would have been like in 78, you know, ish. So anyway, Little things like that were happening, she said, and she said one night, uh, the way she explained it is their bedroom had a um, doorway that went to the boiler room, and I think she said it was like a one-floor house. So uh, she said one night, my dad was asleep, and my dad's like a really heavy sleeper. He slept through, <laughs> he slept through when lightning uh, hit our tree once and crashed right next to his bedroom. <laughs> he slept through. So anyway, he sleeps through anything. So anyway, um, my mom said that she saw a man come out of this boiler room and he slowly walked over to her side of the bed and she said she was frozen. Like she could not move or speak or anything. And she said the first time she saw him that 
she saw a guy in like a flannel shirt, like a red flannel shirt. And she said it looked like he had like a knife in his hand. So she said it took everything she could to finally scream and get something out to wake up my dad who was like right next to her. And she said, of course, when he woke up, as most stories go, it disappeared. But she was so upset that she honestly thought maybe somebody was in the house. So my dad searched the entire house and nobody was in there. So my dad is a huge skeptic and he was just like, you're crazy, whatever, go to bed. Uh, and then the second time that it happened, I don't know like what the, like how much time passed in between the first sighting and the second sighting. But the second sighting, uh, she said she was again in bed and my dad was asleep. But this time when it came out of the boiler room, it was what she thought looked like a hooded figure, like a Grim Reaper, let's say. And she said it did have what looked like, like a sickle in its hand, which talk about fucking creepy. Like, I don't even, if I saw that, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> um, but anyway, so she said she woke up my dad and of course nothing was there. So my dad looked around again to make her feel better. And he really thought she was losing it and, you know, disregarded it or whatever. So... Mom said she felt like uh, she was going crazy, so she didn't talk about it anymore. She didn't tell my dad, and, you know, nothing really happened um, until. Uh, so my dad was in the Army, as most of you know, and my dad had this Army friend. His name was Roy. They were in the Army together. They stayed friends. Um, his wife... Um, I don't know if I should say names or not, <laughs> but anyway, so him and his wife were good friends with my parents and every year after the military, they would get together like once a year. Um, they lived a few hours away, you know, so they'd meet here or we'd go there, you know, we'd take turns and visit. So mom said this time they came to our house and since they were the guest, they offered the bed to them. So my mom and dad's bedroom was given to them. And my mom said her and my dad slept out in the living room because it wasn't like a big house with a bunch of bedrooms. You know, we were always poor. So, um, we didn't have like a guest room. So anyway, they were out in the living room and uh, my mom said that the guy, uh, my dad's friend slept on her side of the bed and the wife was on my dad's side of the bed. Um, and guess what happened that night? The guy, the ghost or whatever it was came out of the boiler room and it repeated itself. And this time it was the man in the flannel shirt and it walked over to what is my mom's side of the bed where the guy was sleeping. Well, he wasn't asleep. He was awake but his wife was asleep. So he saw it. This guy is in the military with my dad. Vietnam vets, right? And he freaked the fuck out. And my mom said he got up. He woke up his wife. He went out to the living room to my parents and was like, we're leaving. We're not staying here. We're getting a hotel. He's like, I just saw something in your room. He's like, this place is haunted. So he immediately recognized it wasn't human it was a ghost and he saw it. And my mom said that she was like, Oh my God, what did you see? You know, and like had him explain what it looked like. And it was exactly what she saw the first time. And he said it even looked like he had a knife in his hand. Freaky <laughs> stuff. So I remember this story because every year that they got together, my mom and him would tell it. And they were always like, the energy, you know, is always the same. Like they were just like, I can't believe that that happened, you know? And this guy is a skeptic, just like my father. And he didn't believe in that stuff until he saw it. So after that, my dad was like, okay, 
maybe there's something going on. He still wouldn't admit it's like a ghost or paranormal. But since his friend saw something and freaked out, he finally kind of believed my mom. And my mom felt, you know, justified or whatever. Like, <laughs> like she wasn't the only one that saw it. So they only stayed there like a year. She said the lease came up and they obviously left. How creepy is that fucking story? Like, that's a story to me that I will never forget. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's my first ghost story I'm going to share with you guys before Halloween. I'm hoping to get back on here like in, at least one more time. I have several of my own stories to share, like firsthand things that happened to me, which are pretty crazy. Um, you know, back when I was younger and lived in a haunted farmhouse. <laughs> so I haven't seen anything in a long time, thank God. Um, but anyway, that's it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And at least this story's out there. If something happens to me, it'll continue on. I have enough little stories that if I was able to or had the money to, I guess, I could actually have like a short story book or write something like that. It was just something I always have wanted to do. But if I don't ever get to do that, at least I'll have these videos of some of the stories out there for you guys to see. So if you like Halloween, you like spooky stories like me, there's one for you and I hope you liked it. All right, see ya.